Hey guys, this is Daniel with Pwn ZNC, and I'm here to assemble uh, my dust boot version 5. This is a spindle mounted dust boot that either supports an 80 millimeter spindle, which is the default uh, size of the machine, of the, uh, of the part here. <laughs> but I also have a 65 millimeter collar with an insertable uh, button. This allows you to uh, continue to activate the DeWalt. 69 is the DeWalt's router, and it has a, a, a chuck um, a button. I forget what it's called. I don't know. But it fits in there and slides right through the middle of the boot so that if you line that up, um, the front of the machine is this way, and the boot sits right there, or the adapter fits right there on the front of the boot and has enough of an angle so that you should be able to get the two and a half inch hose adapter very easily onto this. Your button will sit right there on the right side, which is where your uh, button would probably be sitting anyways. Um, the collar, 69 millimeter collar, comes with the uh, button. Um, the 65 millimeter uh, collar does not, it's not needed. Um, it just has the, uh, so, you know, since the Milwaukee's and the Carbide Creates uh, routers do not have um, buttons up here on, on the body, it's actually down here on the chuck. So this will have plenty of room for that. Um, the brush track and a brush are, all inclu are definitely included. These three things are included in your pack. Um, and depending on whether you ordered the 80, the 69, or the 65 will determine whether you have an additional collar, um, which these are super simple. If you wanted to print these yourself, um, if you didn't want to take on the challenge of printing the entire thing, um, you can just print these out. Just print them out where the, uh, the lip is on the bottom. And the same with the, uh, with the 69. As soon as I get the button out of there, there it goes. Looks like I got a little bit of cleanup I need to do on this particular collar. Set the, uh, just set the collar down. No supports are required. Well, no supports are required on this one. On this one, with the hole, I did add some supports, which is what I was literally just talking about, needing to clean those up. Um, so that button fits in there nicely. But the button, whenever it is plugged in, um, will sit flush. So this part right here on the inside is pretty flush. So there is a lip on the button and a lip on the inside here where you can set this, yeah. So enough of those two. Oh, real quick before we go too far. So you take your collar and you just drop it down into place. There is a, there's a hole, a little ledge right here, which lines up with the little ledge right here. And of course, both the boot and the, uh, the collar are split so that there is a couple millimeters that you can tighten this down onto the spindle to hold it in place. And those slits line up so that it's perfect. So with the uh, 69 millimeter or the DeWalt um, the uh, collar, when you drop that into place, Make sure that's uh, lined up. There, this, there's a little marker here which kind of lets you see it from top. But the hole should line up perfectly. What you're going to do is you're going to take your button and just kind of slide it in there and, and leave it in there. Because whenever you go to install your, boot, or install your boot on your spindle, that button needs to be in place from the inside. That way when you push it, it activates your button on your router in order to uh, grab your chuck there. So I'm going to pop all of this out. Come on, pop out. There it goes. Set both of these aside. And I'm going to start, whenever you go to assemble your boot, it comes with your screws already installed um, and basically it comes just like this in a package. What you're going to need to install or assemble this boot, which is super simple, is all you need is your uh, boot, your brush track, and your brush. So you're going to start with your brush, and whenever you take your brush, you're going to, you're going to need to uh, work it around. You need to kind of bend it around into shape, 
This is a uh, is going to be 360. So whenever you start to work it around, if your boot or if your brush bristles start to fight you and it kind of flays out like that, turn it around and start doing it the other way. There we go, and just kind of work it around. You want your brush to sit straight up and down. And as you work it around, you'll eventually figure it out where the brush sits. Now, once you've uh, got your brush all around and you can see it kind of flails around, but once you get it into place, the track will help hold it. This is a press track, press in. So you press in the brush and you can start pretty much anywhere. So most of my brush, most of my boots are all film ready where you, they, they gives you plenty of view from a camera to watch your bit. V5 is a little different. Um, it involves um, a brush that the default brush goes all the way around uh, this brush track. But if you wanted to film it, um, eventually I'm gonna have additional brush tracks available for purchase, as well as brushes. And what you can do is you can take the brush, cut it short so that there's a gap in the brush. And then all you gotta do is just switch it out between the full brush, the 360 brush, or you know an opening brush where there's, where there's an opening where you can film or put your camera so you can watch the cut happening. That was my thought process there, because since once this is on there, these brush tracks are easy, extremely easy to, to swap around. So let me uh, put this in. So what I like to do is I like to start right here on the smaller end, drop the brush, kind of start the brush there, just kind of work it in, just push it down into place. And in some areas, it is a little tight. That is on purpose, so don't let that discourage you. Um, as you're working that brush around, make sure that brush is sitting vertically. Get pat, work yourself past that spot that won't, you know, this won't go in, because you can use a pair of needle nose pliers to kind of help push it back into place. And then once you've done that, um, there may be a little gap or something in your bristles. Just kind of work your bristles to uh, heal, kind of heal that, that little rubber area where the bristles plug in. But with enough elbow grease, you can get this thing in there. Come on. Now again, there may be areas where it's not quite jumping in there. You could also just use your thumb to just kind of push it in there. Again, if it's not working, just switch over to a needle nose pliers, just kind of grab it, and that will help force it in. Work your way around, don't start in the middle. Remember, this is plastic, so you may be marring the surface here, so be very careful whenever you do that. But just kind of work it around, and you want your brush to sit up and down. You don't want a big flailing out or anything. So once you've got it worked around, the formation of the brush, or the brush track, whenever you get it in there, not only will it pinch onto the brush to hold it in place, but that track kind of helps hold it vertical. But again, the bristles are stronger than that, so it can actually push forward or twist on you. Try to make sure that you're not, your bristle, bristles aren't twisting as you're pushing it in. <laughs> so. Like many of my brushes, I try to cut this a little long. So you're gonna to need to take a knife and you'll notice I haven't gotten this all the way pushed in yet. And it looks like I need to trim mine. I can look in from this angle. It looks like about two millimeters or three millimeters. So I'm gonna chop off about two or three millimeters right there. It's gonna work my knife right in between there. Go back and forth, because remember once that knife releases, it's going to go right into the surface of that brush track. There. In fact, I can even, even do something like this. So you got pliers on there, and since this is so easy to get to, 
I can gently trim those off until my brush can fit into the track. Now I cut these brushes by hand, so, and I just set it up on, up on something, measure it out, and then take some snips and snip it. So these things are not, you know, laser cut or anything. So you do need to maybe chop off a, a couple millimeters in order to get your boot in there correctly. So these bristles are kind of a, kind of long on purpose because this sits way up on the body. So you've got your body of your uh, machine. The, big, the main body part should basically stop right at the bottom of this track. And then from there, you've got your chuck sticking out um, and then down. Usually that sticks out about a half inch or an inch. And then of course you've got your bit on there, which is another inch or so. And it's okay for these longer brushes to kind of bend a little, especially as you're cutting. But you do want it kind of sitting on the surface for the most part whenever you're doing your, uh, whenever you're cutting. So you've got your, your router, you've got your, uh, your, your boot on there, mounted on there. Just put it right onto the chuck, or right onto the body of your router and tighten these down. Don't over tighten them too much. Um, just tighten them enough where it grabs a hold and won't let the boot twist or anything on you. So once you've got that on there, then you've got your brush. Uh, be very careful of your fingers. There are 24 strong magnets on this thing. So just once you get this close, it's gonna snap right on there. And I have pinched my fingers, I can't tell you how many times. But you'll notice the bit will just barely pop right out the bottom there. Um, you may need to adjust it up or down a little bit, um, but remember you've got your button there and it doesn't, it's kind of in a specific position. Um, if I need to redesign this, I definitely can. <laughs> this is ver this is version uh, this is version five A uh, because I increased the height here to cover up that button so that I can put a button a manual button there and get that in there. And yeah, so to pull this pull the brush track off, just kind of grab under there, pull it off, um, and then you can actually leave this piece on your your spindle if you want to use my. Um, any of my Z independent boots because the handles or the arms will come down on either side and I made sure this was enough uh, enough of a, a size where it could actually fit nicely and you can actually use both technically but I hope you like the uh, that I hope it was super easy um, this one only involves installing the brush which is easy well and, and the collars um, 65 with a button or 65 without a button, 69 with a button, or if you've got an 80 millimeter spindle, this will definitely work for you. Um, yeah, as always, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on to build assembling more of them so I can have a nice color array and get nice photos and all that for the web store. You're probably gonna jump, immediately put this on your machine and test it out. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Uh, drop it in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Make sure you uh, like or subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.